Hey, it's Chris. Just Chris. I don't know where that other dude is who was here in the last video. He's always popping in and out, so I'm sure he'll be back sometime, but who cares about him? Today, we have two accessories. These are desk setup enhancing docks. You could call them hubs. And one is what I would call very pro. It's the Bridge Stone Pro Thunderbolt 3 multi-port hub. The other is what I would say is more affordable but still very unique. I've never seen a dock that does what this does. And you'll see why in just a second. Now the plan for today is unbox these here in the studio, then head up to the office and then actually try them out in a real world situation. Now, before we tear into these, just think to yourself real quickly, if you have a MacBook of any sort from the last like five or six years, then what's one area that could really use some improvement? Well, the top of mind thing for a lot of people is gonna be the input output, the ports. So you can just call me Dr. Dongle because I got so many dongles laying around, it's ridiculous. But I'd prefer not to use them. Now, the rumor is that the next 16 inch MacBook Pro is gonna kick off a new era, maybe the D Johnny Ivization <laughs> of certain Apple products. And we're actually gonna get some inputs added back into some of the Macs. That's the rumor. But until then, and even with that, we need to take advantage of products like the Bridge Stone Pro Thunderbolt 3 multi-port hub. Now, when you talk about hubs, obviously looks are important. We're gonna get to that in a second, but here's what you get. You get an audio input or a mic input, right? So even if you're already using the headphone jack on your 16 inch MacBook Pro like me or whatever you got, you can still plug in a microphone here. That could be useful. USB-C, three USB-A's, an ethernet port. All of these ports live on the back of the dock, which is cool because then all the cords kind of cascade down the back of your desk and they kind of stay out of your line of sight, which is nice. One thing you don't want in the back is the SD card slot that's on the side for easy access. That makes sense. All right, that's a big box for such a little dock. So in the box, I got the dock itself and some cords. All the cords I would ever need, including the power cord and power brick. All right, well, feast your eyes on these ports here. What I like about this setup is that it's so compact. Number one, this is not that big. Number two, it's designed to stay out of the way if you want it. So you could stash this towards the back of your desk and just have all those cords cascading off in the back and just kind of staying out of the way. That's an option. Or another option is to have your Mac laptop resting on top. That's what this nice little rubber stopper is for. So you can have it visible and accessible or you can kind of have it out of the way. It's just totally up to you. I love that because there's other docks that just kind of sit there on your desk, taking up a bunch of space, not looking real great, adding some functionality, yes, but if you can be stealth about it like this, that's what I would prefer. And just in case it wasn't crystal clear already or you missed it, this is Thunderbolt 3 compatible. So you get Thunderbolt 3 speeds. Oh, and of course it's got this non-stick surface on the back so that it hopefully stays put on your desk. The price of this bridge hub is 250 bucks. Now this is the second thing that we're checking out today. It's the dock case and it's described as a seven in one USB-C smart display dock. What? It actually has its own little display on top, which is kind of cool. I, that's what I'm saying. I've never seen something just like that before. So let's check this out too. And you know what? As I'm just seeing it here, that's a slick looking device. That is nice. So what comes in the box? It's the dock case itself and a USB-C cable. Now what I like about this is that you get 100 watt PD charging. You've also got an HDMI, a couple of USB-A's, another USB-A on the other side, and of course, some card slots, which is great. So I feel like if we're having that dongle conversation, what you get with this is really like one cool dongle, better dongle that does it all instead of having to use like three or four different dongles. This has some little anti-slip feet on the bottom too, which is nice. And I, I like the looks of it. If you have to have it sitting out, um, this is better than a lot that I've seen. I'll just say that. And that's without even telling you about the screen. The screen is blank right now because I don't have it plugged in, but we're gonna go test that out up in the office and see what it actually looks like. See if it's actually useful. Okay, so. It's been like a day or two now at this point. I'm up in the office. I've been testing out these docks and I gotta tell you, I totally forgot that I had a third dock laying around that deserves a quick mention here. It's from Editor's Keys and it's kind of a dock like you would expect. 
It's got some USB A's. It's got a USB C, HDMI, a headphone jack. Oh, and a light that lights up at the end just to kind of let you know that it's connected. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward, uh, well made, works nicely. And I'll probably mention it more in an iPad video later because it has a specific feature that's great for iPad creators in particular. But of the two docks that I've already tested, I have to say that the Bridge Stone Pro is my favorite out of this bunch, out of this duo. And the real reason has to do with the monitor support. So I was able to connect my monitor really easily with the Stone Pro from Bridge and it gave me no issues. I would also say I just like the design better where it kind of is designed to melt away and just visually kind of stay out of your line of sight. That I liked, that I appreciated. The problem was, uh, and I like all the cords, like I mentioned, cascading down the back of the desk and, and kind of staying out of, out of the way. The problem is that SD card reader. So I have a 16 inch MacBook Pro and this is so much wider than the hub itself that it was kind of hard to access that SD card slot over on the right. So I had to actually move, either move my laptop so that I could get to it, which isn't the end of the world, but it is kind of a pain. Or I tried actually scooting it over into the corner uh, underneath my Mac laptop so that I could actually access it a little bit easier. But the problem with that is then it's not centered underneath the Mac. And for somebody who would want to type on it, that could be a bit of a problem because then it would be a little bit more wobbly. It actually was fairly stable that way. But if you plan on typing on it and not using an external keyboard, that's not really recommended. So that was my big gripe, I think. Otherwise, all the ports and everything, the connectivity seemed to work really well. It seems really well thought out. Um, and so it's going to come down to your specific use case scenario, whether or not it's right for you. Uh, but as a product, it's nice and it works well. It's just for me in my situation, I do use that SD card reader a lot and it's not super easy to access. On the other hand, the dock case gave me some issues when I was trying to connect my monitor and it didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked. So it wasn't as plug and play. Things didn't just work quite as well as you would have hoped, especially as an Apple user. We're used to things like just working. So there's that kind of a knock against it. But of course, the thing that really matters is the screen on here. And I gotta say, I didn't get a whole lot out of the screen. You know, when I plugged in an SD card reader, it said SD card reader inserted. But I already knew that because I plugged it in. So that's not a huge thing for me. There's a little hole right here where you're supposed to be able to insert like a paper clip and change what's actually displayed on the screen. And I actually wasn't able to get that to work because the paper clip wouldn't fit. And I was just using like a regular paper clip. It's a very uh, cheery, polite screen. It says, have a nice day on it. So I feel like there's something here, but it just needs some refinement. You know, it seems like a well-built, you know, nice thing. It's a good concept. I'm not gonna just call it a gimmick because I think that something could be done with it. It just, it didn't offer enough value over something like this for me to say, we'll get this instead. And honestly, between the three, the one that I forgot I even had that uh, I'm glad I rediscovered, the editor's keys, that's probably the thing I'm gonna end up using the most because it's plug and play and it works really good and it's got the light up thing and uh, I don't have to reach around and move my laptop to get to it. But the only thing is it's back to having a dongle, so. It, nothing's perfect. Maybe the next 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip is just gonna blow us away with this connectivity. But I have a feeling that still power users are gonna need some kind of dock, whatever it ends up being. All right, that's enough rambling for this video. So I'll link these things up down in the description so you can uh, check out the pricing, or do a little more research on you know what might be most applicable to you but hopefully this gave you some stuff to think about if you are looking for a new hub for your Mac. Of course, there's a lot of other ones out there. Maybe I'll link up a few others too that are interesting. Uh, I know that Bridge makes some other really interesting uh, docs as well besides this one. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.